Digital forensics and incident response is quite a challenging and an extremely rewarding career in the sense that you are doing a deep dive into a system or an array of systems to find out what an attacker has done. I think of it like the ocean is kind of like an attacker has uh, basically domain admin and you have a, a bunch of people, all the systems jumping in. So. It's a little bit of a weird analogy, a stretch, but it works. And when I was 17, I really wanted to be an aviation rescue swimmer. But life goes on, and sometimes we can't do everything we want to. And so we're just going to kind of go through some of the open source digital forensics tools that are out there for you to learn and potentially use to become um, maybe a professional in digital forensics. So the first thing that we're going to just kind of touch on is autopsy. It's a, a great GUI based, uh, open source tool for analyzing hard drives. You can even check out smartphones on this software. So very cool. One of the, the top ones by far would definitely be useful to learn. Encrypted disk detector is useful in, in the sense that you can check for encrypted drives. It's able to check uh, TrueCrypt, PGP, BitLocker, among others. Wireshark is wonderful for capturing packets, so you can analyze network activity. This would be really useful if there's any type of network issues going on or an incident where maybe an attacker is trying to exfiltrate data, that type of thing. Magnet RAM capture is useful because you can take uh, quite volatile data, the RAM, off the system. And this would, of course, help you to be able to analyze the memory dump and see potentially what the attacker is doing or give you a, a good visual of the volatile data you, you otherwise would not have. So definitely using any type of memory capturing is useful. This is a good free one. Network Miner is able to to uh, generate a PCAP file, and that's great for just kind of sniffing out packets. I, I'd say that this is quite similar to to potentially Wireshark. Nmap is great for checking for open ports. This would be useful if an attacker maybe executes uh, code and then they're opening ports, and now you can check out what ports are open on the machines. RAM Capturer is uh, a great free software by Belkasoft that allows you to dump your machine's memory, and this is compatible with Windows OS. I believe it. Um, I b believe also Belkasoft has some software that works for Macs as well. Uh, Forensics or Forensic Investigator is uh, quite a useful tool. It's a Splunk app. It's got uh, a lot of tools combined into it, so this would be useful if you're a big fan of Splunk. A forensics acquisition or acquisition of websites is great to mirror or copy over website pages so that way you can have a website cloned and keep it. Hash my files is a great way to just get a, a listing of all the MD5s and SHA hashes for uh, various files you may have on your machine. You can also do that with PowerShell, though. This is quite an old, uh, fairly outdated listing of tools, but uh, we're, we're just going to kind of go over all of them, and you can kind of pick and choose what to learn. If, uh, if some of these don't exist, that's just the fault of this blog. But a USB write blocker has a great way of being able to look at uh, USB content without leaving any changes to timestamps. So this would be be quite useful if you're looking to do that. A crowd response is a nice tool by CrowdStrike and it allows you to, to gather info. In the case you're doing incident response, you can end up checking out the results in XML, CSV, TSV, or HTML files. And that, uh, that is done via CR convert. It runs on both 32 and 64 bit architecture. <clears throat> There's some other CrowdStrike tools as well for investigations like Tortilla, Shellshock Scanner, Heartbleed Scanner. NFI Defraser is a, a tool to grab multimedia file data streams. You can recover full or partial. 
exif tool is useful to look at any info on files. It's very useful, for example, for image files. If you want to see like maybe GPS info and that type of stuff, uh, Toolsly is a bunch of different tools in one website that allows you to get hashes. Uh, you can also do some encoding of text. Uh, SIFT, that's the SANS Investigative Forensic Toolkit. It's a great workstation. It's, uh, it's available uh, as Ubuntu, and you are able to use this if you're doing a, just really any incident response. It's basically just like an incident response operating system for you to use. Dumpzilla, this is useful if you're looking to uh, pull out information from Firefox, Ice Weasel, and SeaMonkey browsers. This does require Python. Browser history. Uh, Foxton has uh, two free tools that you can use it for uh, history capture within browsers, as well as a browser history viewer. So that's kind of kind of nice. You can pull out uh, web browsing history from Chrome, Firefox, IE, and Edge, and then you can, uh, of course, have once you've got that captured, you are able to extract and analyze the internet activity. Forensic user info is uh, <clears throat> uh, with forensic user info, you're able to extract out RID, LMNT hash, uh, password reset, account expiry date, login count and fail date, groups profile, uh, profile path. So this is kind of cool. Uh, Kali Linux, uh, of course, this is a great operating system for pen testing, but you can also use it for forensic purposes also. Uh, Paladin, it's a forensic suite. It's able to, um, <clears throat> it's a good Linux forensic suite. It's modified uh, Linux distro, and uh, it's just based on Ubuntu. So just a, just another OS. Sleuth Kit, uh, great command line tools. You're able to investigate and analyze volumes, so great for working with file systems for looking into evidence. Kane, this is another Linux distro that gives you a bunch of forensics capabilities there's got at least uh, they've got at least 80 tools on there for analysis and investigations so you can create reports volatility this is a great memory forensics framework this is useful when you're looking at the the volatile piece of ram you can extract info like running processes network sockets network connections dlls registry hives this is uh, also able to Look at info within Windows crash dump files and hibernation files. This is a great tool. It's fully uh, fully free under GPL. Windows scope. This is a memory forensics and reverse engineering tool for looking at the volatile memory. It's pretty much used for RE of malware. It's able to provide a capability for analysis. So um, analyzing the Windows kernel drivers, DLLs, virtual and physical memory. The corners toolkit. Um, or TCT, it's good for uh, just digital forensics. You can run it on uh, several Unix systems. It it pretty much is useful in aiding analysis of computer uh, disaster and recovery. Bulk extractor, this is uh, a good tool for scanning disk images. You're able to extract uh, directory of files and um, in, in the process, uh, or in this process, you're able to ignore file system structure. So this gives you faster results. Oxygen Forensic Suite is great for gathering evidence from a mobile phone to support a case. And uh, Oxygen Forensics Suite is, uh, they've got a st standard edition, so it's free, and it will help you achieve analyzing uh, mobile phones. Free hex editor Neo. It's a good, just basic hex editor that can look at large files. You're able to have a, a lot of different fe features in there, as well as especially in the commercial edition. This is useful for just checking out large database files or forensic images. Explico is just an open source network forensic analysis tool or NFAT. This is really just aiming at applications regarding internet traffic. So uh, POP, IMAP, SMTP, 
There's also features for um, other protocols like HTTP, SIP, IMAP, TCP, UDP, uh, TCP reassembly. There's also the ability to output data to, um, to MySQL or uh, SQLite databases as well as others. So this is just a, a, good, a good solid list. Keep in mind, some of this information may be outdated a bit. This is from 2018. Uh, this, uh, this old Digital Forensics Association website has quite outdated info too, but you can see um, it mentions some of the similar tools we had already covered, like Autopsy, TCT. This website is outdated. This no longer works. There is a Mac Robber. That's a digital investigation tool for collecting uh, data from allocated files in a mounted file system. I uh, did not load this site yet, but this really just kind of redirects you back over to um, SleuthKit. And LiveView is a Java-based graphical forensics tool. It creates a VMware virtual machine out of a raw DD-style disk image or physical disk. This it allows you to examine uh, like basically just a boot up of the image or disk, and then you can gain an interactive user level perspective of the environment. Kind of neat. Open source digital forensics. This site is, is really just full of different open source software. So you could use this stuff in, uh, in, in any sort of digital investigations, but Unfortunately, that site is down. So th this is kind of a museum. But SleuthKit is, of course, uh, another that's a similar uh, tool. It's up here, Autopsy. I mean, they're both on, on the same site. But this was already covered in the prior one. And we've got this, uh, this framework here for extracting and decoding data stored in devices. And this just kind of loads uh, quite, quite an old site. But... Kind of neat. Autopsy, su Autopsy supports Python, so you can develop modules within Autopsy, so that way everybody is not making their own separate different tools, because that seems to happen quite often, whether that's in attack frameworks or in defensive frameworks. It seems like a lot of people all just want to make their own their own version of a tire and spray paint it or whatever. But anyway... Autopsy has support for Python modules. You can develop your own for Autopsy. Very cool. Great to look into. And we've got another beautiful list from InfoSec Institute. Uh, obviously, some, some other forensic toolkits exist out there. So SIFT, we've already kind of covered this one. But you can see this is a, a bit more updated inf info from what we saw earlier. So the old one mentioned uh, Ubuntu 14. This mentions Ubuntu 16. So there are different versions of Ubuntu that this can come in. Uh, of course, you can you can go more modern if you'd like. That's probably not a bad idea. To stay, stay current with Ubuntu versions if you want. A sleuth kit autopsy is something that we've already looked at. So this is great for really just re recovering deleted files, uh, data carving, compromise indicators so scanning a computer using sticks there's a, a lot of different different things you can do within this so really great awesome tool oxygen forensic suite we already covered this it's already it kind of covers more info i think than the other site we looked at uh, deft zero that's digital evidence and forensic toolkit it's a linux based distro that allows you to gather and preserve forensic data Great tool at Network Forensic Tools. This this is kind of categorized, which I like. Wireshark, we already covered this some. This is able to dig deep into network data and just really give you a full view, full visual of the network data going on. Network Miner. This, we already looked at this one as well, as well as Explico. So this also can pull up uh, VoIP calls, FTP, TFTP, from PCAP files, great, great useful tool. Forensic imaging tools include FTK Imager, Linux DD, IXI or IX Imager, Memory Forensics. We've got Magnet, RAM Capture, Memorize, Website Forensics. It's uh, we already covered as well. Forensics acquisition of websites, FAW. This is able to extract images uh, on web pages being viewed, 
can capture JavaScript CSS, can help to detect malware, it's able to preserve a web page while it is being viewed by a user. Removable media forensics, USB historian. This is good for, um, basically you can get a complete record of USB drives that were inserted into a machine. This is originally intended to conduct forensic investigations in reference to stealing or moving unauthorized access to data. So great list, awesome, awesome info. We're just gonna go over a couple, couple more lists here and then we're gonna be done. We'll wrap it up and then into the future there'll be a review of these tools. But Pro Discover Forensic is another useful tool. A sleuth kit with autopsy, we already covered this. We already mentioned Kane, Paladin. In case this has not been mentioned yet, but this is definitely a, a tool very commonly used in the enterprise world. The Sans Sift. FTK Imager, so Forensics Toolkit is, or Forensic Toolkit is by Access Data, and that as well would cost you money. There is also F-Secure is a great, great tool to look into. Uh, Magnet RAM Capture, we already covered X-Ways Forensics. This is good for analyzing remote systems. Wireshark, we already covered this. Uh, it's capable of extracting network traffic. Great for looking at network activity. Registry Recon is supports uh, just about any whatever Windows systems that you'd be running modern day. It's able to recover valuable NTFS info. You can also mount volume shadow copies within a disk, and it, it's able to rebuild in or rebuild the active registry database. Volatility Framework, we already touched on. This is great for being able to, to look at uh, PTE, and that's page table entry flags. There's an API for that. As well as kernel address space layout randomization. That's um, supported. You can automatically run failure command when a service fails to start multiple times. Explico. We already touched on that's just uh, another another analysis tool for networking eFence that's a tool to, to be able to work with any computer forensics this would be able to give you protection from malicious behavior policy violations it supports multi-threading that means you can execute more than one thread simultaneously crowdstrike uh this is one of the best cyber forensics tools that you can have to manage system vulnerabilities. You can secure virtual, physical, as well as cloud-based data centers. So this, this kind of is just a, a wrap up here of that listing. And we're just going to move on to the last one and just kind of skip over what we've already looked at, which is we've done autopsy, encrypted disk detector, Wireshark, Magnet RAM Capture, Network Miner, and Map. We know that's just a Network Mapper, RAM Capture by Belkasoft. That's just a free tool for dumping data from RAM. Forensic Investigator. This is a, again just a Splunk add-on or Splunk app. It's able to look at quite a bit of info. Forensics Acquisition of Websites is for gathering web pages for handling a forensic investigation can capture an entire page or partial page captures all types of images integrates with Wireshark hash my files is able to get you your MD5 or SHA listing files crowd response again we already looked at this exif tool we already checked that out NFID Fraser Toolsly Sift, that's an OS for IR. Dumpzilla, again, that requires Python. Uh, Firefox, Ice Weasel, and Sea Monkey data can be ripped out. Browser history, this is able to look at capturing data as well as viewing it in regards to browser history. Forensic user info. 
we already looked at that. Black Track is one of the most popular platforms for pen testing, but it's also got forensics capability. Paladin, so just more more OS, more distros, I should say. Sleuthkit, it's got the the CLI for analyzing volume file systems. Kane, another IR OS. And lastly, we're just going to look over a great GitHub posting here by an awesome individual that covers collections, tools, distributions. So we already looked at a lot of these, but BitScout, GRML, Forensic, Remnux, we already saw Sift. We looked at Paladin. WinFE, that's Windows Forensics Environment. This is a great one to look at. Eric Zimmerman has wonderful tools. All of this information is really good to review. Uh, frameworks, Autopsy, we already mentioned. Uh, DFF is a uh, forensic framework. Dexter, Intel MQ, uh, Cooper, uh, Reg Rippy. Power Forensics. It's a great tool for live disk forensic analysis. Already reviewed the Sleuth Kit. Uh, some of these are, are are really niche, but Live Forensics is good. Uh, OS Query, MIG Linux Explorer, GRR. That's great for remote live forensics. Acquisition. We've got Velociraptor. This is wonderful in terms of being able to work with Python. It's got a great API. RAM Capture, Magnet RAM Capture, Lime, FireEye Memorize, Fast IR Collector, Dump It, DFIRORC, AVML, Artifact Extractor, Artifact Collector. Regarding imaging, Belk Imager is useful, DC3DD. DCFLDD, FTK Imager, and Guy Imager. Carving, you can use B strings. This is just an improved uh, strings utility for just string checking. Bulk Extractor, Floss, this is great for static analysis. It's able to deobfuscate strings from malware. Photo, photo Rec is good for file carving. Swap Digger is a bash script for automation of swap analysis regarding a Linux OS, and it's able to extract and search for Linux user creds, web form, logins, and uh, emails, etc. Memory Forensics, there's Redline by FireEye. Key Farce, MemprocFS, Recall is great to look at. Volatility, and then Vol Utility is a web app for the volatility framework. For network forensics, we already mentioned Wireshark and Explico, as well as Network Miner, all great mentions. Regarding Windows artifacts, Beagle is a great mention. There's Crowd Response, Fred, this is a cross platform Microsoft Registry Hive editor. Last Activity View is a good NERSoft tool, and this is good for the Windows OS for collecting info on different systems for displaying actions made by the user, for example. Log on Tracer, Python EVT. This is a Python parser for classic Windows EVT files. Uh, the more modern uh, file type is EVTX. Uh, Reg Ripper 3.0 is an open source Perl tool. This parses registry and presents it. NTFS, MFT processing, so master file table. Uh, this is good for, uh, well, MFT parsers are good for, uh, of course, um, just looking at MFT. MFT extractor, NTFS journal parser, NTFS USN journal parser, uh, recuper a bit. This is able to recover NTFS data, reconstruct it. Python NTFS is good for analysis. And we've got a, a lot of different tools as well that I, I won't go over all of them and mention every one of them just because this list is quite long and I'm going to wrap this up here. But overall, this is a great 
resource or listing of several tools useful for digital forensics. There's a lot of challenges. For example, uh, DEF CON CTFs, it's an archive of different DEF CON uh, CTF challenges, forensics CTFs. So a, a lot of, overall, a lot of great challenges. There's also some sans ones, but uh, ideally the, the best thing to do is really to just get your hands on these tools, use them quite a bit, practice with them, and just get, get extremely familiar with them to the point to where when you're doing uh, digital forensics, response of any type, you know exactly what tools to use and you're able to, to execute them and, and maybe even use some APIs for automation. Uh, that uh, pretty much summarizes a good overview of some of the best digital forensics tools available that are open source free, some of them, not all, but most of these. So have fun and, and happy forensics hunting.